since the original production of this DVD in 2005, new research has shown that in addition to the role of Th1 and Th2, the pathophysiology of MS involves upregulation of pro-inflammatory T helper 17 cells, or Th17, and reduced activity of anti-inflammatory T regulatory cells, or Tregs. The activity of Tregs is upregulated by glutyrimer acetate and interferon beta. At this time, there is no evidence that any agents used to treat MS have an effect on Th17 activity, although that finding is likely to be made. In addition to its effects on Th1, Th2, and Tregs, glutyrimer acetate has been shown to alter macrophage activity. The effect of T-cell-mediated inflammation on axonal demyelination has been recognized for many years as a major and prominent hallmark of multiple sclerosis. In recent years, however, studies have established that early axonal degeneration is also a prominent feature of the disease and that it correlates with a persistent accumulation of permanent neurological deficits over time. The inflammatory activity leading to demyelination that is caused by T-cell and macrophage attack is reduced by the current immunomodulators for multiple sclerosis. Although suppression of T-cell activation may reduce inflammation in MS, whether this is the best treatment is complicated by the knowledge that T-cells are also involved in the regenerative processes that occur in the CNS. The pathogenic process in the CNS itself should be the major focus in multiple sclerosis therapy in order to protect against demyelination and axonal loss and to promote remyelination and regeneration directly in the target tissue. To understand the mechanisms of action of MS drugs, it is important to be familiar with the concept of antigen presentation and the differentiation of naive T cells into Th1 and Th2 phenotypes. In peripheral lymphatic tissue, a foreign molecule or antigen is engulfed by an antigen-presenting cell. Subsequently, part of that antigen appears on the surface of the antigen-presenting cell in the groove of a major histocompatibility complex or MHC class II molecule. A specific T-cell receptor of a responding T-cell then recognizes the antigen-major histocompatibility complex combination. Co-stimulatory molecules are also involved in this process. Once an antigen is presented, the T-cell undergoes clonal expansion and differentiates into effector T-cells. The resulting cells include T-helper type 1, or Th1, and T-helper type 2, or Th2 cells. Th1 cells produce cytokines that in general tend to be pro-inflammatory, while Th2 cells produce cytokines that tend to be anti-inflammatory. The release of cytokines by the Th1 and Th2 cells affects how inflammatory multiple sclerosis lesions are formed and whether protective immunity occurs. The mechanism of action of glutyrimer acetate has not been fully elucidated. However, GA is believed to have a dual mechanism of action that reduces inflammation in the periphery and the CNS and causes the release of neurotrophic factors within the CNS. In the periphery, glutyrimer acetate competes with myelin-like antigens at the antigen-presenting cell level for binding on the major histocompatibility complex. Due to its ability to compete with myelin antigens for binding to MHC class II molecules on antigen-presenting cells, glutyrimer acetate blocks the proliferation of myelin-reactive T cells and their capacity to secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines. Th2 cells are generated on initiation of glutyrimer acetate therapy, consequently the number of anti-inflammatory Th2 cells rises. This is one suggested mechanism. Additionally, glutyrimer acetate silences Th1 cells through energy, apoptosis, and the Th2 secretion of anti-inflammatory cytokines that inhibit Th1 cells. Several of these GA-reactive Th2 cells then migrate into the central nervous system. Once in the CNS, 
These cells are believed to reduce inflammation by a phenomenon known as bystander suppression. Restimulation of the glutirimer acetate specific Th2 cells is thought to occur through myelin basic protein, MBP, and other myelin byproducts. Reactivation of these cells in the CNS stimulates the release of anti inflammatory cytokines, which inhibit myelin reactive T helper type 1 cells, increase the number of Th2 cells, and possibly modulate the function of microglial cells. A more recently proposed action of glutirimer acetate suggests a potential neuroprotective effect of some autoreactive T helper type 1 and type 2 cells. Recent studies show that glutirimer acetate specific T helper type 2 cells produce brain derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and other growth factors. It appears that BDNF produced by these cells has neurotrophic effects in MS target tissue. It has been suggested that BDNF may be involved in MS lesion resolution and recovery. This may explain the MRI effects found in patients taking GA and the therapeutic improvements in suppressing relapses. For instance, there is a decrease in black holes, a reduction in MRS measures of axonal injury, and a decrease in brain atrophy. It is these complex effects outside and within the central nervous system which are believed to be the main contributors to the long-term clinical effects observed with glutirimer acetate. The mechanism of action of interferon beta in multiple sclerosis has not been fully elucidated. It may involve any one or all of the known actions of interferon beta, which include antiviral, anti-proliferative, immunomodulatory, and blood-brain barrier activities. Interferon beta affects antigen presentation by decreasing the expression of molecules, including MHC class II and co-stimulatory molecules necessary for this process. The migration of inflammatory cells across the blood-brain barrier into the central nervous system is facilitated by VLA-4, very late activation antigen 4 on the T-cell surface and VCAM1, vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, on endothelial cells. Interferon beta reduces this cell migration by disturbing the VLA4-VCAM1 receptor interaction. It does this by decreasing the expression of VLA4 on T-cells and also by increasing soluble VCAM levels. The result of this is that the remaining VLA-4 on the T-cells is swamped by soluble VCAM and is therefore unable to bind to the endothelial VCAM receptors, hence cell migration is reduced. Matrix metalloproteinases, MMPs, produced by T-cells, facilitate the transport of inflammatory cells into the brain. Interferon beta decreases the production of MMPs. Thus, the influx of T cells into the CNS is reduced, and gladolinium enhancing lesions resolve rapidly. Natalizumab is a monoclonal antibody which selectively inhibits an adhesion molecule, alpha 4 beta 1 integrin, also known as very late activation antigen 4, or VLA 4. VLA-4 plays an important role in immune cell migration into the central nervous system by interacting with its counter-receptor on endothelial cells, vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, VCAM. Natalizumab binds VLA-4 and blocks the adhesion and subsequent transport of leukocytes across the vascular endothelium of the blood-brain barrier. The mechanism of action of natalizumab was elucidated in studies of mice with experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, an animal model of multiple sclerosis. It is unclear if natalizumab enters into the central nervous system as antibodies often have difficulties traversing the blood-brain barrier, even in diseases in which the blood-brain barrier is indeed compromised. Therefore, unlike glutirimer acetate, it appears that natalizumab may not have any direct action within the central nervous system. 
Mitoxantrone is a synthetic anthracene dione derivative widely used in the treatment of malignant disease. While its exact mechanism of action is not known, it is mitoxantrone's immunosuppressant properties that underpin the rationale for its use in multiple sclerosis. Mitoxantrone